All right, welcome back. It's still The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We go straight now to Off the Press. Uh, G.D. Johnson, the chief lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, will be analyzing the dailies with us this morning. Good morning to you, J.J. Good morning, Justin, and good morning to the Messi, the citizen of Messi, if I'm Messi. All right, Messi, you have the first paper. All right, let's take a look at the Nigerian Tribune this morning. 2022 revised budget, NAS approves 4 trillion naira for fuel subsidy. We talked about this yesterday. Interesting. Please get 182 billion naira as salary increment. INEC allocated 219.544 billion naira. And federal government gives not to 17.32 trillion naira total budget for 2022 fiscal year. Uh, these are riders underneath the bold caption. Push on the way to prune PDP presidential aspirant to four. You also find plateau attack. We have buried 106 people so far, says local government chairman. And just before we move away, gunmen kill INEC official in Imo during voter registration and commission suspense exercise. Now there's a video that's making the rounds. I mean, video that made the round. Uh, if, if you go on Twitter, you see that video where some armed men went to a registration center uh, where people were collecting their PVC. And uh, it was really, really a sad, you know, sight to behold. Uh, really, really sad. But we move away from that. You also find this uh, Ade Banjo, Songwo Lu, Oyetola, orders to grace first remembrance anniversary of uh, who find out on the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Federal government may conduct consensus or census April next year. It's interesting. Federal governments may conduct census April next year. And as Council of State okays pardon for 159 convicts. Away from that, get your NIN ready to board train from May. NRC is quoted. It might just be uh, a requirement to board a train, mm -hmm. really. All right, uh, away from the Nigerian Tribune to the Daily Independent. The lead story this morning, APC chiefs maul northern candidates to checkmate PDP. Other stories, insecurity, 11,536 schools closed in Nigeria since December 2020. That's according to UNICEF. Gunmen shot dead, attacking a number of police station. INEC officials shot dead in Imo State. Federal government to conduct national census in April 2023. CBN FX program rakes in $60 million in one month. Lawan urges police to probe death of Osinachi Mwachuku. Other stories on the Daily Independent newspaper. Let's see. Easter security uh, unity must guide our actions and utterances. That's according to the president. Documents show AB OBJ approved transfer of OPL 245 to Malibu. APC Congress says hoodlums unleash violence disrupt Bayelsa court session. Uh, those are all of the stories you can find on the front page of the Daily Independent newspaper. Let's move away from the Daily Independent. We take a quick look at the Punch newspaper. In security, U.S. approves $1 billion attack helicopters. Others for Nigeria. Buhari meets service chiefs. A board caption for the Punch this morning. Underneath insists Nigerian military must undergo human rights related training. And PDP knocks APC over killings. Kidnapping says ruling party has failed. These are riders underneath the board caption. Away from the board caption, four trillion naira petrol subsidy will kill economy. Man, LCCI orders one the president. It's a lot to grapple with. National Assembly okays 17.3 trillion naira revised budget. 965 billion naira fresh borrowing. Senate orders probe of oil theft. Please get... 182 billion naira salary increase. That's also now the bold caption and writing you find this morning. 
Clearing agents reject customs 15% uh, you know, charge on imported vehicles. And you find the federal government fixes April 2023 20, for first consensus in 17 years. And just away from that, families of kidnapped Kaduna train passengers grown appeal to bandits. Consumer group others kick as reps clear dirty fuel importers. Really? And you find Chibok. Parents again demand action eight years after kidnapping the question is are these children still alive and mko abiola's eldest son kola joins politics let's see what the difference uh, it would make autopsy begins on osinachi's body senate demands justice and just before we move away you find a plateau attack community buries 106 and local government chair says many missing Lagos accountant allegedly set wife and brother-in-law ablaze and calls for help. These are the headlines on the punch this morning. And finally, the Nation newspaper. Experts are saying economy will sink further with four trillion naira subsidy. What well, two writers there? National Assembly revises medium-term expenditure framework. Police get additional 182 billion naira for salaries. Other stories making front page. Anim Obi Consort Okoa in Asaba. Wiki Shans Obasaki. Arabuhari Lawan Tinubu Edge Hope Alista. Insecurity worries can. 21,039 policemen promoted. Omisha Ray's comment will retire some politician or politicians, says Oyutola. APC neck to meet on Tuesday. And just uh, below uh, the red strip there, renovation of complex uh, senators' reps uh, relocate. Osinachi's death probe that's uh, from the National Assembly. Those are all of the stories we can take from the Nation newspaper this Friday morning. Let's have G.D. Johnson uh, join the conversation right here. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning and good morning to our viewers all over the world. And good Friday to everyone of us. All right. G.D. Johnson, uh, the bold caption for the Nigerian Tribune says, NAS approved four trillion naira for fuel subsidy. And you have a reaction coming from the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, amongst others, uh, saying that this is going to kill the economy. What are your thoughts on this? Should, should, should this come to you as a surprise that the National Assembly approved the revised budget of 17.3 trillion naira? They approved it. This is April 2000. 22. So you shouldn't come to anyone as surprised with this. a pattern. It's a consistent pattern. Now, election here that you see is a Mungo's budget being approved across the length and breadth of the country from local government to state, state to the national. But what is interesting to note is the, is, is the amount of money that is put for first subsidy. The entire budget is 17.3 trillion. And then you have a quarter of the budget, because you have four trillion naira. A quarter of the budget goes to forest subsidy. A quarter, 25 percent, close to 25 percent of your budget goes to forest subsidy. You don't need a soothsayer to tell you that something is wrong somewhere, and you don't need an economic expert to tell you. The basics of economy will tell you that um, you are running your economy aground, and then there's more to eat that the other I can see. The question is, who are those that consume this? Well, this, this that will spend this huge amount of money is on record that the president, when he was still a private citizen and a contestant, um, questioned the first of it. It's unfortunate that um, the APC government enjoyed a lot of leverage from the media and coupled with the fact that we have a moribund opposition party that you are light. Well, the, well, for me, there are no opposition party. They are just two sides of the same coin because you system them cost capital. 
among the political class is just an interest. And once your interest is served, whether it's it, you don't care. But just to cut the amount, who is fully, who is subsidizing? Who? What are they subsidizing? That will spend 25% of our annual budget will be expended on fuel subsidy. No subsidy of, um, of, of kerosene, no subsidy of diesel, but subsidy of PMS, premium motor spirit, which you call petrol. So it's, it's unbelievable. It's unimaginable. So you don't need any expert to tell us that the economy will, will surely face, face a downturn because you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you want you are, the bulk of the um, budget we are running is budget deficit. Two, we service a lot of debt. Three, we also, instead of investing in capital, capital, capital expen expenditure, we, we engage in, in, in consumption, in, in, in recurrent expenditure. Expenditure that cannot be easily audited, that cannot be verified or accounted for. But, but, but Jide Johnson, if you look at some of the argument that's been put out, uh, first, the government is saying that there, there are plans to reduce, you know, the production quota due to the activities of vandals. And now due to the price, I mean, the hiking price uh, of crude oil, and that's necessitated by the uh, Ukraine and Russian conflict. Uh, these are some of the reasons. Don't you think that this is valid? Okay. Are we getting fuel from Ukraine? But, but however you look at even it, the, you know, the, no, the, no, the prices no, no, of even the is actually... Eastern, even the European, European Union that gets fuel from Ukraine, has it affected the price of petroleum products in those countries? No, it's, 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 it's one, it's, it's, it's lazy economics, two, um, it's, it's, it's incompetence, and three, it's just an excuse of, 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 of those that are making money out of young know, the fortunes of, of, of Niger, misfortunes of Nigerians that are given that Ukraine, Ukraine crisis has always been there. In actual sense, when there is a crisis in the in the oil market, it pays it pays you as a country because um, our own type of crude oil, bunny light, it's is one of the most sought after globally. So we are making more money from from you are handing you are handing more foreign exchange from it. You see, messy. I don't want, the more you talk about this, the more, the more you feel, I don't want, this, you see this issue of fuel subsidy, only God knows what is happening. All right, uh, JJ, let's uh, move on. Uh, the Daily Independent, uh, its main story uh, there, this one is APC Chiefs, uh, Mall Northern Candidate to Checkmate PDP. But I'll uh, leave that for a bit. Uh, let me take one issue that is bugging me, uh, which is that of insecurity, uh, education, uh, kidnapping, and all of that, uh, school security and all. 11,536 schools closed in December since, uh, in Nigeria, rather, since December 2020. That's according to the United Nations uh, Children fund uh, UNICEF. What are your thoughts uh, as regards uh, that, Gide? Add that to the COVID disruption. Mm -hmm. Add that to ASU strike. And then look at what will happen to the Nigerian economy in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years' time. The implication of closing down school does not only have immediate consequences, it also has future implications uh, because what is the quality of manpower that we get in the next 5, 10, 20 years? That's just the implication. That's the implication of this closure of schools. And it's, it's unfortunate that um, we, we, we reward failure in, 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 in Nigeria uh, because some ministers ought not to be in government again with respect to how they have handled um, the educational sector and the labor and the labor the labor the labor sector because how can a nation open its eyes to see that those number of schools are closed and then as we on strike and then there's no head in sight with respect to how to resolve that education is the key to transformation transformation of any nation comes from innovation and innovation it's a product of learning, inspiration, and instruction. 
Now you have denied people that opportunity. Then how do you intend to grow your economy? How do you intend to grow your society? Because there's a template, there's a plan that those that are in primary school this year, in five, six years, they will be in secondary school. In 10 years, they will have graduated. They will contribute to the economy of the nation. But you have truncated that process with school being closed. And nobody is batting an eyelid. And nobody is resigning. And nobody is called to question. Rather, you have them displaying some, some measure of, of our. It's unfortunate. And I'm, I, 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 I'm not missing my word. It's unfortunate that the character that we have had as in Ministry of Education, as head of Ministry of Education and head of the Ministry of Labor, have shown some measure of arrogance that is not required for, for public service and that is not required for the, for, for the common wealth and the common good of, of Nigeria. It's, it's unfortunate. Okay, so another one that's very troubling as we inch closer to 2023, it's the election. And on the Nigerian Tribune, you have gunmen kill INEC official in Imo during voter registration commission suspense exercise now prior to this time i had mentioned the uh, the attack i mean looking at the video that's actually gone viral it was also being promoted by a sister station pvc registration collect and collection center was being attacked uh, this is what's happening what what should we anticipate looking at 2023 because there's been a lot of concern about you know security and the 2023 general elections or the elections? The the issue of attack in Imo State is nothing new. It's nothing new. Attacking INEC infrastructure in Imo State, you recall before the election in Anambra State, the critical um, sensitive documents were, 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 were housed in Imo State. And we have a situation whereby INEC offices were set up some of the critical uh, sensitive materials that are required were set up And you ask yourself, are these people ghosts? Are they ghosts? Can they be traced? Can they be located? What has happened to our intelligence community? What has happened to our intelligence guard? What has happened to our security architecture at the state level? that it has become easy for people to commit one-ton destruction of property, unseen, and then this itself, it's, 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 you see, anyone that tries to thwart the democratic process is planning a coup. Is planning a coup, is any attempt. It is not the use of bond to seize a radio station and announce the change of government. That is a coup. Any attempt for you to thwart the democratic process is is is, is sedition. It's a coup, and not even a single security head has been fired. Not single one. Not police commissioner. Not DPO. Not area commander. Not state DSS director. Look at the catalog of crises you have had with respect to INEC offices and its infrastructure. In Imo State, for example, not to talk of an Ambra state. And then you have a governor that collects the, 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 the security vote. You have the local government spending the security vote. And then you have someone parading himself as the commissioner of police and someone parading himself as the DSS director. You don't, you don't reinforce failure. Accountability is holding people accountable to whatever responsibility you have given to them. The people committing this crime are not ghosts. They are human beings. But, but why can't security agents track these people down? But Jida Johnson, it might just be quite disturbing. I mean, looking at that particular video, I'm, I'm probably sure you, prob you haven't really seen it. Who, who are these gone men? Because from what I saw, this Where person looked probably the very How kitted. The I mean, and they, they look very well Where dressed and kitted. Looking like they have a, 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 you know, a 
bulletproof vest on and with proper ammunition. Where do they get the guns from? So who are these people? How do they move the gun? How do they move the gun? How do they move around without being intercepted by security agents? Merci. All right, uh, GD, let's, uh, let's uh, move on uh, before we get very emotional about um, the security situation in the country. Uh, no, it's not been emotional. It's just been, it's just been, just looking at it from a passive point of view. Uh, yes, there's I no understand. need. Yes. Let's just okay. move on now. Uh, there are talks of um, uh, the conduct of uh, um, a census uh, in 2023, and precisely uh, we are looking at uh, the country that is the federal government is looking at um, April. Let's just talk about uh, the census and all that. At April 2023, the elections and all, and all that. Let's talk about the time. We we'll have talk about elections the in February. Mm. We we'll have elections in February. We we'll have elections in March, mm -hmm. and then you have census in, in April. April. So, in April, so the first two months, the, the first two months, in, and the first month in the second quarter. Mm -hmm. Now, this sensor will have taken place in 2016. It will have taken place because the last sensor we had was in 2006, and we are meant to have sensor every 10, 10 years. Now, 2016 to date, there are no windows. Or opportunities other than for us to fix the sensor in an election year and then we'll go on national holiday in 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 february because of the election we we'll go on national holiday in march because of election and then we we'll go on at least a minimum of one week holiday because of sensor in april and then you hand over power in May. They've approved it. There's nothing anybody can do. But you, one thing you just wonder is that what, what is the strategic thinking behind some of the decision making? What informs the way we go about coming about with policy statement that will drive our nation? I hope that the sensor succeeds. But you could see the bottlenecks we have created with respect to that. That's putting too much pressure on your people who go out to vote for police, again, for the censor. And then you close businesses on election day, you close businesses again because of censor. That we could have done, we could have scattered in different periods and different years. So, well, it's better late than late. So, so yeah, yes. Okay. I mean, you, you have actually put out, you know, Valley argument, G.D. Johnson right there. But let's also look at another part of the fact that we're going to have censors. We understand the importance of having censors for every country and for every government because it helps in planning. You will plan you, because you know the number of persons that you have uh, in the country, different group of persons. It helps also with the budget. So how have we been going about budgeting for the people and planning without for the window, I mean, you say, I mean, if we're looking at 10 years to have a census, we've had a window of almost five or thereabout. So how have we been planning? What have we been doing? How, how did we arrive at having all of now, this? Now, let me put it across to you. We should have done this census before 2023 election, which will have allowed for constituency delineation, constituency delineation for the hours of breath. I agree with you, census is critical to planning. Planning is key to development. However, when you are planning, plan does not. All right, all right. we seem to be having a disconnect uh, with Judy Johnson. All right. Uh, well, he has, like you said, he has raised some very valid um, points concerning, you know, 2022. We have so much to do in 2023. There'll be so many holidays, like he has um, said, uh, with the elections uh, holding at that time, you know. And when you do censuses, you know, people are advised to stay at home. There's no work for quite some time. People are asked, uh, those who, you know, want to travel to their state, you know, they have this window and um, time frame to do all of that. And uh, because of that, uh, there'll be so much time, there'll be so much time loss. And uh, I wonder how that would actually keep our economies. Uh, but uh, we understand that we have uh, G.D. Johnson back.
So it's, 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 it's about the timing. A plan does not guarantee you success. A well-executed plan is what guarantees you success. But if you understand what you're going to be dealing with, then it makes, you, it makes it possible. So do we even know the number of children that are born into this country every day? Do we know, how do we even plan, if, if we look at the um, you know, budget that's been allocated to educational sector, uh, do we know the number of persons that we have? I'm just saying as much as planning does not necessitate success, but we also need to understand that you can't take away planning. And so a government exactly. that has not now, been planning for the past five years, what have there been, how, did, how, how have there been, a, a, now, you know, um, you working have, with the policies an and actions? You have, you have an administration that is at the twilight of its administration, a month to the end of the a month to the end of the administration. That's when the administration is conducting censor. The censor will be conducted in April. Power will be handed over in May 29. By the time the new administration comes in, that's when the provisional result of, of the censors will be coming out. What we are seeing in effect is very, very simple. Censor is key, is important. In actual sense, number is so important that the Jewish in the Jewish tradition, God gave a particular book, the book of Numbers. Numbers is important. It's important for us to have accurate data, accurate data of the number of people we have in Nigeria, and accurate data of the various demographic um, attributes of our population. It's important. However, the timing is critical. Look at what the 2023 budget as 2022 budget has made provisions for, and what 2023 budget will make provisions for. Now look at the INEC budget, 219.54 billion for INEC. They should share this money to all Nigerians and let us not do any election. 219.5 billion for INEC, 4.4 trillion for, 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 for petroleum subsidy, and then the national censor will come up with in fact, when you see the budget for the national censor, I, I'm good. I, you you will be shocked to see the number, the amount of money they will use to to enumerate because that's the term to enumerate in Nigeria. You will be shocked with what we both we be voted we be voted for. All right, uh, um, um, JJ, that's as much as we can take on this particular discuss uh, for want of time. Uh, J.D. Johnson is the Chief Lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Many thanks for your time this morning. It's a, it's a, pleasure, it's a pleasure to be with you, Justin, and Mercy, and happy Good Friday. And we'll wait for the drama in Oshun between Oyitola Omishuri and Arabe Shala. Oyitola retired then, Arabe Shala, but I'm, I'm glad to let him know that Omishuri will retire. We can take this to the bank. It's All, a right. Conundrum. All right, we'll see how that plays out uh, in Ocean State. Yeah. Thank you so much yet again. It is still the breakfast and then Plus TV Africa. Uh, off the press is off right now. We'll take a break and see what happened uh, this day in history. And we'll come back and talk some more about uh, Bring Back Our Girls, Easter, and a whole lot to expect on the show today. Stay with us. <laughs>